All right, let's take a quick second to review a couple things before we jump in to this course. Now, throughout this course, I will be doing things at a pretty good speed, and I don't want you to get lost or be confused when things happen very quickly. We'll do things like create a new comp or make a new solid, and I'm not always going to kind of explain how to do that. So if, if you're unfamiliar with the shortcuts for doing some of these things or switching between tools, we're gonna go over all that really, really quickly in this little video. Throughout the course, I'll make things pretty quickly and I'm not always gonna say, well, here's how you do that. One of them is make a new composition. You can come up here to the menu and go composition, new composition. Or you can see the shortcut, which is listed right there, is control N. So if we hit the shortcut control N, and you can see there, and that gives us a new comp. There's also a button right here, create new composition. We can click that to make a new composition as well. We'll also do things like create solids and I'll say, all right, create a new solid. Let's uh, throw some text on it. Well, how do you create a new solid quickly? The shortcut for that is control Y. That'll bring up a new solid. Then we can come in here and change the color and the other attributes. But there are other ways. You can right click down here in the comp timeline and you can go new solid, just like that. That'll also create a new solid. Or you can come up here and go layer new solid. All of the basic layers, you can do the same thing. Text, you can come up here, camera, null object, shape layer, adjustment layer, light, those are all available in the layer. They're also available down here as well. And there's shortcuts for those as well. But throughout this course, we're mostly just going to be dealing with solids and text. Let's go over a couple of these tools here that we're going to be using throughout the course. We have the selection tool here. And when you hover over these, you can see that they have the shortcut key in the parentheses there. So if we're using a particular tool and we need to go back to the selection tool, all we have to hit is V. So if we want to rotate this around, that's W. Let me turn on the transparency there. And so now we're using the rotate tool. But if we want to get back to the selection tool, all we have to do is press V. And now we're back to the selection tool. Or we can go back here. Or the other thing you can do is if you press and hold the W and make a modification, and then you release it, it's going to go back to the previous tool. And this works with just about all of these, except for the text tool, because you actually enter text. And so there's nothing to release. The text tool is control T, or you can come up here and just click on it to grab the text tool and enter some text there. A couple of these other tools, the hand tool, a lot of times you'll see me moving around the comp window. This is accomplished with the hand tool. Then you can just click and drag all around here. You can also do that in the timelines. If we zoom in here, we can go like this and we can go up and down as well. But other times I will have the selection tool and well, you can hit H to select it and then click back. But the space bar also does that as well. And usually how I have my hand positioned is I have my left hand positioned in such a way that my thumb is usually over the space bar. So I usually will hit the space bar to move around like this instead of hitting the H key, but both of those work. And you have the zoom tool here, which is Z. And uh, I may switch to this um, from time to time by accident. I usually don't use the zoom tool. To zoom in the comp window, you can use your mouse scroll or your touchpad scroll, however it is on your system, that will zoom in and out of this comp window here. To zoom in and out of the timeline here, you can use the plus and minus, which it actually showed equal there, but it's the plus and minus. Or you can grab this handle here. This is the time navigator start. And so this will kind of zoom in as well. And you can grab here and slide around the comp. And that's one way to do it as well. There's also a zoom here, which will center in on the current time indicator right there. And then you can scroll back and forth here. Those are some navigation tools. We talked about the rotation tool. Right here, that's W. C is the camera tool. And if we create a camera, so let's come in here and go new camera and whatever it is, doesn't matter. If we hit F4 and we bring up these little switches, we turn this layer to 3D and now we hit C, we can bring up the camera controls and we can kind of cycle through. There's the orbit tool or whatever you have selected here. And then there is the, uh, the move tool really. And then we have uh, this, which is the track tool camera track X, Y, and orbit. So you can cycle between those by hitting C. Then we have the pan behind tool, which is Y 
on the keyboard. That is the shortcut. And if we take a layer, let me turn this back into three or 2D here. And uh, let me reset the transform. Now, if we grab a layer and we have to move the anchor point, if we just grab the anchor point with the selection tool and move it, it's going to move the whole layer. We can hit A on the keyboard to bring up the anchor point controls. If we move those, you see it's moving the layer in relationship to the anchor point. So we could bring up rulers, which is control R and kind of line things up that way. So if I reset this like this and say, I really wanted the anchor point here, you know, we could do like that. And then I could move this up. That's a lot of work. So what we can do instead of doing that, let me get rid of these is we can use the pan behind tool, which will basically let you adjust the anchor point without moving the layer around. And so we can move it around. If we hold shift, we can lock it to either the X or the Y axis here. And so we can position that a little bit easier. And we'll do that a bunch in this video as well. Uh, then we have the rectangle mask tool, which is Q. And there's a couple different mask tools. There's the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, mostly going to be using the rectangle tool here. And then we have the pen tool, which is G. Now there's a couple different actual tools in here. A lot of these will, well, let me, let me go down here on this. So oh, I locked it. A lot of these will kind of show up. They're kind of contextual tools. For instance, we still have the pen tool selected, but now if we hover over it, we get the select tool here. If we hold alt, we get the change vertice tool. If you hold alt, we can change this back to linear or Bezier curves. If we hold alt and click and drag, we can draw new handles. If we hold control down, we get a pen minus tool, which is the delete tool. And then if we hover over any other point of this mask, we get the add tool there. A lot of times in this video, we'll make a mask and then I'll switch back to the selection tool in order to modify the mask. And uh, I find that a little bit easier because if you're still in the pen tool and you're moving things around, a lot of times you can be trying to move points around and you'll get close to the point and click and you'll actually draw a new point in your mask. So it's my preference to switch to the selection tool when I go in and modify the masks. So there you go. And then we have the text tool. We have the brush tool, the clone tool, the erase tool, the roto, and the puppet tool. None of those last five we are going to use in this course, uh, but there they are. Now we went over the rulers and guides. To bring those up, it is control R. And to make a new guide, we can just click up here in the ruler and drag one down. And that helps you to line up things in your project. Now, other times we'll add a little reference indicator of the frame by adding the title action safe. And this gives you a couple of boxes, which gives you kind of the center point and these safe lines to put your text. And a lot of times I'll use that just for positioning and referencing a couple of times throughout the course. I may jump into the actual comp settings once we've made a composition. And to do that, while you're in this little comp timeline window here, it's control K and that'll bring up the settings. So we can change things like the frame rate or the duration, the background color. We can also change the name of our comp as well. In the same way that we can go into the comp properties by control K, we can go into one of the layer properties that we have selected by control shift Y. And this works for solids and adjustment layers. And so we can changes there as well. Let me put this back to 1280. just like that. Then we'll go back here, control shift Y, and we'll say make comp size. Other times we will rename layers. That's pretty easy to do. Like if I wanted this black to be the background, you know, if we have a whole bunch of layers in our comp black solid here, it's not really going to do us any good. So if you have your layer selected and you hit enter, we can just type BG or whatever you want to name it. We can also do the same up here. So we could rename this comp, rename or whatever you want. One thing that I'll do a whole lot during this course is I will tell you to select all and then hit U. A lot of times when you're taking layers and you're modifying, say we grab these layers and we want to look at the rotation and the position and the anchor point. 
If you have a whole bunch of layers open with a whole bunch of the parameters and properties open, navigating your project can become a real pain because you have to scroll around a lot. And so a lot of times what I'll do just to kind of clear things up is I'll select all of the layers and then I'll hit U. Now what U does is it either shows or hides any of the changed parameters, like say, let's take this layer right here, let's bring up position and throw a keyframe here and a keyframe there, we'll just move it a little bit and we'll also go in here, control shift Y and change the color to red so we can see that and we'll also turn it on. With that layer selected, if we hit U, we're gonna bring up the modified properties there and you can see what we have going on there. Another way that you can kind of find things that you've modified very quickly is by using U. So if we've modified a rotation keyframe, for instance, and we last looked at the position keyframe, by hitting U, it'll bring up all of the things that we've modified so we can get at them more easily. Also, P will bring up position, R will bring up rotation, T will bring up opacity, a will bring up anchor point if we had a mask on here, like that. M brings up the masks and the mask path. If you hit MM, it brings up all of the mask properties with feather and opacity and all that jazz as well. And we'll definitely be doing a lot of that. So now if you wanna bring up multiple properties, what you do is you have the first one, then you hold shift and then select the other one. So I hit P, I'm gonna hold on shift and I'm gonna hit R, A, T. Rotation, anchor point, and opacity, and that will bring up all of those parameters so that we can look for them, regardless if they have keyframes or not. I've mentioned it before, this is the current time indicator, and we can move that along by clicking and dragging, but also the page up and the page down buttons will move the current time indicator one frame. Now if you hold shift, we can move the current time indicator 10 frames, that's kind of a standard thing. If moving any parameter with a keystroke moves it once, holding shift in doing that will move it 10. So if we wanted to say, take this text layer, let me delete these other ones, and we wanted to move it, right now we're moving it one pixel at this zoom level. If we hold shift, now we're moving it 10 pixels at this zoom level. Now that changes as you zoom in because now when we're zoomed in 400%, one pixel, if we bring up the position, let me zero out this position here so you can see. If we move this one pixel, it's not actually moving one pixel, it's moving one pixel at this zoom level. And because we're zoomed in 400%, you can see if I hit the arrow key left, it's actually moving at 0.2 pixels. But if I zoom out to 100% and I move it, it's actually moving at one pixel. If I'm zoomed out to 50% here and I move it, now it's gonna move it two pixels, and you can see how the math works out there as well. And if I hold shift, you can see now it's moving at 20 pixels because we're zoomed in to 50%. If we're at 100%, if I hold shift and arrow keys and up and down work as well, you can see it's just moving 10 pixels. Also, let's jump back to mask really quick. There's different mask modes. The default when you throw on a mask on a layer is add, but there's also none, there's subtract, and there's intersect, lighten, darken, and difference. Primarily what we're going to be dealing with in this course is add, subtract, and none. Those are pretty self-explanatory. When it's add, it basically adds inside the mask. When it's subtracting, the area in the mask you drew subtracts that from whatever the layer is, and none is none. Also, one thing that we'll do quite a bit is duplicate stuff and there's a shortcut for that and there's a couple different ways you can do that. One, you can go up here and go edit duplicate. I never do that, so you'll never see me do that in this course. What I usually always do is select the layer and hit control D. It works on pretty much anything. Uh, if we have the effect selected and we control D, we duplicate that effect. It works with comps. We can grab a comp and duplicate it. In part of this course, we're gonna be looking at using some presets and I don't really tell you how to install them, I just show you where to get them and how to use one of the bundle that the particular presets come with. So how do you install them? Well, it's pretty easy. One, you download them to your computer, then they will probably be compressed, so uncompress them. And whether you're on a Mac or Windows, and depending on what kind of programs you have installed, that may be different for you. For me, I go to my downloads folder and 
is I have a program called 7-Zip on this Windows 7 machine, and I just right-click on the file, I go to 7-Zip, and I say extract to blah 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 slash, which basically makes a folder in here, and now if I type gra, boom, there's my stuff. And inside here, inside these gray machine presets, you'll see we have these .ffx. These are After Effects presets. See right there, boom. So where do these go? Where do you, what do you do with them? Where you wanna go is this location right here. Now on a Mac, it's gonna be different for you, but basically it's in your Adobe install file. And on a Windows, that's probably gonna be under your C drive, program files, Adobe, After Effects, CS, whatever, support files, presets. And in here, you'd basically drag this folder, not the top level folder here, you drag this folder here so that it's only one level down in here, and that's where your presets go. And uh, once you've installed your presets in there, you have to restart After Effects for them to show up here, and then they will be right here, you can see Gray Machine Presets. And that is how you install presets. Let's just talk about the look of your After Effects workspace here. This is all kind of customizable. The way I have it laid out is the way I usually work. You can't see it, it's kind of off the screen here, but up top you go to workspace and then you can reset quote unquote standard. That looks something like this. Usually what I like to do is change things up a little bit. If you wanna modify the way your workspace looks, let me turn off rulers here so it looks a little bit more standard. It's pretty easy. There's little handles here on all the edges of the windows. You can slide those around. You can also grab the boxes and move those around. So say I didn't want preview right here. I wanted preview up with this other jazz up here. Easy. If you want it to appear first, you just click and drag it over. And now you have these three tabs here. I have other ones here. Like I usually like to have the character. So I'll go to window and then it's up here off the screen character. And that'll bring up the character window. I usually like to have that down here and you can see what I did there. Let me drag this out here. You could also have these floating too. If you have multiple monitors, you can scooch them off and have them on another monitor or you can just have them floating if you prefer. But if you want to dock them, you can see these little trapezoids show up. If I want to dock this over here or on top or on bottom. So in this case, I want to dock it right here and that will make a new little panel window. And I can add other things to that. Uh, if I go to window, I usually like to have the tracker over there as well and paragraph controls, and I have no idea what the shortcut for that is because who the heck brings up the paragraph window multiple times? I don't. So I usually like to have character and paragraph down here because I do work a lot with text and that's handy to have. And um, sometimes you have to expand it up to see all the properties there. But if you didn't like that, we could throw that up here. And now we have effects and presets all the way to the left, then character, then paragraph then we could make more room for our timeline down there. And we can see all of the parameters here in the character window. You can save your workspace if you want and name it. There are a bunch more shortcuts. If you want to find all the shortcuts, you can just Google After Effects shortcuts and you'll find the Adobe page. It looks something like this and it has all the shortcuts you could ever want on there. And a lot of those will probably prove really useful for your workflow. So check those out, memorize a couple of shortcuts, and uh, let's jump on into the next part of this video and get making some cool looking stuff.